So, today we're doing timing chain for the 22RE. So today we're going to be installing this uh, timing chain. With all the sprockets, all the goodies, we're also going to be putting in a water pump and oil pump. So, got the new timing cover here, which is pretty nice. It's all brand new. There's looks good. I'm actually really surprised actually taking all this apart. We got a new um new water pump. Everything looks good. There's the gasket inside there. Just cool. We got a crank pulley. We got a new oil pump. There's a gasket in there too that goes in this this little seam. This looks pretty good too. The cool thing I, I liked is that they brought a new gasket. So out of my like master gasket kit set from Yoda shop. Uh, I don't have to use that What I was really surprised was the timing chain. So this is what came in the timing chain kit So it gave me a new sprocket for the cam for the crank uh, It came the metal guide rods with new hardware Which I was surprised also um, the other side of the guard, I mean uh, the the timing guides. Um, it also came with this uh, RTV sealant, which I don't know if it's, if it's any good or... I don't know. L let me know what you guys think of this. I have never heard of this. I usually use that uh, Permatex. So this is what I got. Uh, Permatex. Uh, silicone maker, water pump and thermostat housing. So I have that, and then also I have this, this Ultra Gray uh, by Permatex. Uh, I'm definitely gonna use this and this because this is uh, the stuff that I actually trust. I don't know about this. I guess I'll just keep this just as an emergency on an extra toolbox or something, just in case I need it. But I'm really impressed with what this kit has. So it has um, uh, the gaskets, the timing chain, which looks all good has a new um, uh, crank gasket which is basically that but that's already on there so I'm not going to need that the this is the OEM sprocket for the cam which I think I'm going to be using if it's not too scored up or anything crazy the other thing I can't stress enough that you guys should do is label everything so so far I took off the oil pan just to clean up that area and just get easier access to putting on the timing chain and then this uh, this gear right here I think that drives the the chain. Um, it's actually really identical to this one, this brand new one. So I'm not even gonna try to pull it off. I'm just gonna keep the same one. The spline still look pretty damn good on it. Compared to this new one, obviously this one's new. Some of the things, but that's OEM and the splines look pretty good. So, um, and also I don't have a puller to pull that because yeah, that's not gonna come off very easy. So right here, all I'm basically doing is test fitting the new sprocket and making sure that it all lines up, it all fits just fine without any problems before I even try to slip on the chain. After that, I slip on the chain and I put it on the crank pulley first. There's actually a black link that's supposed to go on the dot of the sprocket at the crank. And then you put the other black link on the dot on the camshaft sprocket on top and then you bolt it on and it should slip right on. It's actually fairly simple. This is what I was talking about. A black link compared to the gray links on the side. That one gets lined up with the dot and also there's a pin on what is being used to bolt down that camshaft sprocket. On the bottom side is the exact same thing. The black link to the dot on the sprocket and you're good to go. So we got the head, the block, um, the timing um, components, timing chains, so we got the guides, we got the tensioner. This was the, um, the camshaft sprocket with the gear for the distributor and also the bolt. Uh, this was like, that's the thing that I couldn't get off. So that's the, the spline for the crank and also the sprocket that drives that chain. Um, and then we got gaskets, the timing cover, the oil pump, the water pump, and then the crank, the crank pulley. So here I'm setting in all the guides and everything. It's actually fairly simple. If you completely forget, just follow what I'm doing. The other thing too is that the tensioner, I had to fight it a little bit just because obviously it's a tensioner. So I have to fight the spring to actually set it in, but it was actually fairly simple.
here I'm putting in all the gaskets or actually the two gaskets for the timing uh, cover the other thing is that I have difficulty putting in or setting in the timing cover only because I left the crank spline for the pump for the oil pump on and I'm supposed to take it off so it could slip on and then slip on the spline so that's what I'm gonna be doing pretty soon you'll see The easiest way to remove this was using heat. Heat on the spline is, is going to start expanding the metal on the spline and just hammer it out. And that's all I did, hammer it out with a screwdriver and it came out actually very easy. So here I'm just doing a final bolt check making sure that everything's tying down and nothing's loose before I put on this cover. I have no idea what happened with my camera but I lost footage for taking out the spline. All I used was like a screwdriver and a hammer and I just kind of grabbed one of those splines and I just hammered out and it was actually very easy. I didn't even have to use a lot of force into it. It almost slipped out almost like I guess by hand you could say. One thing you do have to check that this timing cover has a few bolts and random spots that it gets bolted on but there's also a hidden one in here and it's right there all that's left to do is to start bolting down the timing cover to the block and that's basically it if you were organizing you put it in the baggie pick up that baggie and start putting all the bolts into the designated holes it should be fairly simple the thing I'm doing here now is uh, spraying that permatex uh, creating seal also the the gasket and the water pump setting it in and also I'm not missing any bolts It's just that there's studs on the original timing cover that I had to transfer over those studs to the new one because the new one didn't have any After this I torque everything and I accidentally snap one of the bolts it happens the bolts are old So just go buy a new bolt and no big deal after that ended up happening, I just bought all new bolts the following day because I was already over it that night. It happens. And I'll have a picture of the torque values that I used for this because they're supposed to be all torqued at a certain value. So I got the water pump and I put in new hardware because the other one was old and it was starting to snap. So this is what we need for the oil pump. So we need the bolts. Uh, there is that one bolt up there that does need a thread sealing. I'm going to be using the, this uh, Permatex. This Permatex thread sealant. Um, I've always really trusted Permatex all the time so if you're going to see a lot of Permatex products. Um, Whatever you use, it's completely fine as long as the thread sealant. Uh, and this is our layout here. So we got the spline, then we got a gasket, then we got the rings inside. Inside the oil pump, which is basically that. And then we got, um, got the actual oil pump, the spring, and then a few bolts, and the gasket, like this gasket. This is already one piece, so that's all put together if this thing if this thing breaks these gears are gonna fall off but it's completely fine you can just put them back and continue with this install so we're gonna put in the spline put in the gasket put in this thread sealant and basically follow that diagram and torque everything down so the way you install the crank spline for the oil pump is that the splines have to be pointing out toward the outside not toward the inside of the block and all I'm doing here is just heating it up just so it could uh, go in there a little bit smoother, which it goes in actually very smooth. I don't think, I don't even think I need to put fire onto it, but I did it anyways, just so I don't have any problems. The other thing I use is just use silicone sealer to just set in the gasket because the gasket is going to want to fall out and setting in the gasket with the oil pump gets kind of tricky. So I put it in there just a little bit around the seam just so it could lock in the gasket and it doesn't move when I put in the oil pump. So that's one of the tips that I would give you guys. And don't forget that the top bolt needs thread sealant or else you're gonna have a leak. 
I have a picture of all the torque values for the oil pump. It's actually fairly easy. But that's basically it. The last thing I did is just put the studs on the water pump for the fan. And I left the nuts there too just so I don't lose them. But uh, that's basically it for the video. Thanks you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.